What's up, guys? All right, so I just dropped Lacey off at Zenergy because she has a training to do for work. And I'm gonna grab a cup of coffee really quick and then get to work. All right, got my coffee. Ready to start the day. In this video today, I wanted to do a review um, on the Osmo Pocket Camera. And that is the camera that I'm actually using right now. I just got this camera had it for a little over a month now and I've been using it and I love it and I can't wait to show you guys what it can do so stay tuned all right guys so welcome to my first video review vlog for chasing the wild wonder I'm gonna do video reviews every once in a while that's part of the plan for the channel um, what I want to do is review things that are relevant to the content that we're creating and what chasing the wild wonder is today we're going to be doing a review on DJI's Osmo Pocket Camera. Meet Osmo Pocket, a compact, stabilized, smart camera that was made to fit in every moment. So, real quick, just want to tell you what got me so excited about this camera in the first place. When they first announced it, one, obviously the big feature is that it has a mechanical stabilizer on it. Two is well, the size of this thing. I mean, this is called the Osmo Pocket and it's probably the first camera with the name Pocket in it that actually does fit in your pocket. If you watched our Portland video, um, I used a GoPro 6, a Hero 6, and a GH5 to, to capture all that footage. And a lot of the times, you know, I had the GoPro on a stick. You could hear the bumping of the stick. So we're in an Airstream. We're looking at Airstreams right now. Pretty cool. Really bad audio, and it's just really frustrating me. I was like, man, how can I have a camera that is small, easy to pull out fast, and you know, turn on and start recording something that's not as big as a DSLR? Although I do like having my DSLR for the more cinematic shots, but for the vlogging style, when I want something quick, something small, inconspicuous, um, and still capture good-looking footage and good audio, you know, that at that time, GoPro was really the only option. Enter the DJI. Osmo pocket camera. For me, when it first came out, I thought, man, could this finally be the camera I've been waiting for for vlogging? Well, I've been using DSLRs for, what, 11 years now for video? I think when the 5D Mark II came out um, in 2008, and that was really the first DSLR to start doing video. You know, now that I have the GH5, it's much smaller and lighter, but it's still, you know, it's still hard to hold in one hand. It's hard to film yourself. Um, and it's, it, it's more difficult it is, it's not that hard, but it is definitely less convenient. It's not as inconspicuous. So this was super exciting because uh, this thing fits in your hand comfortably. You know, it's super lightweight. Um, let's turn it on here. There we go, now that it's on. Um, super lightweight, you know, you can flip it around. Let's flip it around. Flip it around to get uh, selfie mode. And I'll just start recording here so you can see the actual footage compared to uh, the GH5. So here's the, here's the screen of the Osmo Pocket. You know, it's just a really tiny, it's just enough to just get your framing and kind of see what you're doing with the camera. I'll be honest, I don't want to carry a DSLR around on my shoulder all the time. But now that I have the Osmo Pocket, I can literally keep this camera in my pocket at all times and have it ready to go for those times when I want to vlog about something. Um, so it makes, it makes it that much more convenient and easier, you know. I'm trying to make this video for about a month now. You know, with kids and family and work and all that stuff, it's hard to find the time and when we do, it's hard to actually get the video done with the kids. <laughs> so we're gonna go. We're gonna try to go sledding. So here is a stability test. Of the Osmo Pocket. Right now I am currently walking through knee high snow. Uh oh. Gosh, you guys, this video has been the hardest thing to make because everything I try to do just keeps falling apart. You know, I tried, to, I tried to include them in this video as much as possible, you know, going sledding and things like that, but it's making videos is difficult enough. To have a camera that's as convenient as the Osmo Pocket makes it that much easier and much more enjoyable. Go check out our Christmas video that I made. You can check that out here. That was made and not 80% of that is Osmo Pocket footage and the rest is uh, GH5 footage. All right, well, let's jump into the features of this camera and what it can do, uh, the quality, and why I think that this is the perfect camera for vlogging. 
All right, so first off, let's talk about the video quality of this camera. Um, it shoots Ultra HD, which is a 4K resolution, which basically means it's a bigger picture, more detail, uh, sharper image uh, than full HD, which is 1920 by 1080. The 4K 60 footage on this looks absolutely amazing. I mean, for what for what this camera is. It doesn't look like anything like the 4K footage out of the GH5, but then again, the GH5 is not this small. It doesn't fit in my pocket. Uh, you can do 4K 60 or you can do 4K at 30 frames per second, which is more of a normal frame rate. 60 is obviously double that. It's a lot more smooth. Um, so I like to shoot in 60 so that if I want to, I can convert it to 24 frames per second and make the footage uh, two and a half times slower. Um, and get a nice, smooth, slow-mo footage for that nice cinematic feel. One little quirky thing, though, about this camera shooting in 4K, which I didn't know buying it, was that when you hook it up to your phone, um, you can't transfer 4K footage to your phone, um, which is kind of a bummer because I was kind of hoping that for smaller videos that aren't full-length vlogs for my YouTube channel, like things I just quick post I wanted to make for Instagram, you know, I'd just be able to shoot that over to my phone, do a quick edit on the phone and upload it to Instagram. Well, come to find out, I can't even transfer 4K footage to my phone, which is super weird. I'm not sure why. I mean, my phone can shoot 4K, so I know it's not a limitation of the phone. Maybe it's a limitation of the lightning adapter or whatever, but... So that's kind of a bummer because I was hoping to just keep this thing in 4K 60 and not have to worry about deciding, okay, I'm going to shoot this in 1080 or I'm going to shoot this in 4K. And it's a bummer because the 1080 footage is not as good from what I've seen as the 4K footage. Um, it is a little more grainier and it's not as sharp and clear as the 4K footage. And I've noticed that with all of DJI's drones as well. All the drones with the Mavic and the Phantom, um, the 1080p footage is, it seems a little more compressed, a little more muddy, um, and just the details not there as if when you're shooting in 4K. Okay, so let's talk about what this thing comes with, what to expect, what do you get with this thing? Well, one, you get the Osmo Pocket, the camera, and you get a little hardcover case to keep it in, which is nice, because you know this the gimbal thing is just kind of flopping around. Uh, it is pretty delicate, so you want to make sure that you're not just sticking it in your pocket um, or leaving it out uh, anywhere. So they give you this hard case to slide it into, keeps it protected, you know, that way the gimbal's protected in there and it protects it from getting banged or scratched up or anything. Um, comes with a phone adapter, uh, so you can put that on there. Um, I have the lightning cable adapter on there because I have an iPhone. It also comes with a USB-C one for Android devices. And you would just slide that right in there and then you're able to just plug it into your phone just like that. And you can use uh, it with the DJI Mimo app. So if you turn the gimbal on, what's nice is it automatically pulls up the app once it's connected, and there. Now I am shooting on my phone. So yeah, so if you connect it into your phone, you can shoot in what is called Pro Mode, um, which allows you to change the settings so that they're not automatic. When you're shooting uh, with the Osmo Pocket just by itself, it's all the settings are automatic. There's no way to, to adjust the ISO, or the aperture, or the shutter speed. It's all automatic. But if you wanted to have a little more control over your image, you're gonna have to plug it into your phone. Um, it is nicer to have that bigger screen for sure. Okay, so let's talk about the gimbal really quick. Um, the gimbal is actually really amazing. You know, this thing, obviously you could tell, like I can move it around, the, cam the camera always stays level. I mean, obviously it's not, you know, it's not perfect. Like if I go like this, you know, obviously the camera's gonna be moving around. It's not gonna account for that kind of movement. It keeps the camera pretty stable when you're moving around, when you're walking, compared to the iPhone, which is pretty shaky, even though it has, it does have a uh, digital stabilizer when you're in 4K mode, um, but it's still pretty shaky. And, on, and to be honest, I just don't like using my, my phone for recording video for whatever reason. You know, I'll, I'll pull it out and take pictures and do like Instagram and quick things like that. But for actually recording video, it's not very user friendly to hold for long periods of time when you're filming. And it just looks like phone footage, to be honest. I mean, it's super wide. Uh, this is a lot less wide than the iPhone, but it, you know, the iPhone is super wide. It just kind of gets everything. It's not like 
just doesn't look that great. So, okay, so like I said on the audio on this thing, way better since the, set, the first firmware update that they had. On my GH5 right here that you're watching me on, I have a video mic, a Rode Video Mic Pro hooked up to it. So that's the audio from that. And then if I switch over to the Osmo Pocket, you're hearing the audio straight out of the Osmo Pocket. So you can see the difference in the quality um, and how well you know the Osmo Pocket's mic really does perform. I mean, it's just a really, it's just a tiny little hole in the pocket that the audio captures in. And you know, the Video Mic Pro is a pretty big. Um, Pretty big, nice boom mic, and it, that thing captures amazing audio quality. Now, I'm not saying that uh, the Osmo Pocket lives up to that quality or a quality of a lavalier mic by any means, but for what this mic is and for what you need it to be for vlogging out on the go, it's an awesome mic and it captures great audio. Um, the other thing is the active track or the face track, which is really awesome. So, right now it's tracking my face, and if I keep the camera still, see if you can see this on the. So, if I keep the camera still, but then I move my face around, it's actually following me, which is pretty cool. I'll even set it down on the table and it'll keep looking at me and then I'll move around and it's just following me. Look, I'm not holding it, I'm not touching it. It's just following me, it's like, it's like some kind of demon magic. But one thing about uh, face track is that it's not available in 4K60. Um, so that is another thing, I'm not sure why, I guess maybe it can't handle the 4K at 60 frames per second and tracking your face. If that's a processor limitation, not sure. Um, exactly what that is there, but face track is not available in uh, in 4K60, and I don't think Active Track is either. So what's the difference between face track and Active Track? Well, face track automatically can like detect a face and track it. Active Track is if you're filming some another subject, like a car or a person, you just double tap on that, and it'll kind of kind of make a box around it and then track that object. If that object stands out enough from the background and it can kind of determine, okay, that's the shape of a person or the shape of a car. Uh, but that's an awesome feature. I mean, that's pretty cool, like, to have it be able to follow you around. I mean, go, no other camera can do that because it's not on a gimbal where it can rotate by itself. One of the other things that I love about this camera is the time-lapse and motion-lapse features. This, that has been something that's been really fun to play around with. You do all your settings, you leave it in place, it takes pictures every couple seconds or however long you decide, and then it, comp it compiles them all into a video for you, and you get a nice, nice looking time-lapse video. But because of this gimbal, the same as the uh, active track feature, is it can use the gimbal to kind of control itself and do a pan or a tilt, and you can combine time lapse with motion. So that's what we get a motion lapse. Um, I love this feature because it adds so much more dynamic to your time lapses. Yeah, you can't, it's like, yeah, you can't do any dollies tracking left and right or in and out or anything, but it does give you pan and tilt, which is awesome because it adds some motion to your time lapses, which makes it that much more dynamic and that much more interesting. Yeah, so that is the DJI Osmo Pocket, honestly. Um, like I said, I've only been using this thing for about a month and a half, but so far, I really like it. I do have a couple things, though, that I don't like about it, and there's some cons in it. Um, like I mentioned earlier, you can't transfer 4K footage to your phone, which is a super bummer. Hopefully, the, they could come out with a firmware that is able to fix that. Um, I'm not sure if it's a fix or if it's just a limitation of the hardware. And all the advertising for the Pocket, you know, they really pushed hard on this story mode, which is you can plug your phone in, get, and it's all these themes and templates, and basically it tells you to shoot like three to four second shots, you know, and you go out and you shoot them, you do your thing, and then it compiles it into a quick little edit where it's all kind of flowing together and really fun. For some reason, that is still not available in the app. DJI still hasn't commented on what, uh, when that's gonna be released. Okay guys, so during the making of this video, DJI released a firmware update that um, addresses most of the issues that I was talking about. So the first thing that they fixed was that they added Pro Mode to the Osmo Pocket without needing to plug it into the phone, which is awesome. Now I can go in there and I can change my exposure settings, I can change my shutter speed and my ISO according to what I want, and I can um, keep that without having to have it be fully automatic, which is really great. Um, the other thing they added was the, um, which wasn't there before at all, was the D Cine like color profile. So now instead of just the normal profile that there was before, there's a D Cine like color profile. The other thing is that they finally added story mode to the Mimo app. I played around with it a little bit and I gotta say it's actually kind of disappointing because it's very 
is very limiting on what it allows you to do. Um, you can't change, you know, you can't change the music. Each each theme has its own settings. It's kind of just like it's kind of just uh, cemented into what it is, except for what depends on what the shots you get are. Um, the other thing is that it doesn't. It always ends up. It always watermarks the video with Osmo Pocket, and it always adds the logo at the end, the DJI logo. So that's kind of disappointing that you have to have those things on there. Um, you think they would take those off, um, you know, but whatever. I mean, it's not a huge deal. I probably will not use the story mode as much as I thought I would, unfortunately. Um, a lot of the music is actually pretty cheesy, and the edits are actually really not that great. So, so much for that. So, so So if you're just starting out vlogging or if you've been vlogging with a bigger camera and you want something a little more convenient, this is the camera for you. I'm telling you, this thing is awesome. I've enjoyed I've enjoyed using it. I've enjoyed having it with me just to be able to capture some behind the scenes things or different vlogs and things like that. Like it's great quality. Um, you know, obviously it's not amazing, but for what it is, it does a pretty good job and um, I've been super impressed by it. But yeah, I'm expecting that uh, next year they'll come out with the Osmo Pocket 2. And uh, yeah, I'll probably jump all over that as well and upgrade this one and uh, have this one and an Osmo Pocket 2. And maybe I'll give this to my kids to start vlogging. Who knows? This is a great little camera and I think you're going to love it if you decide to get it. Um, if you have any other questions that I didn't cover in this video, make sure to leave a comment below. Um, and let me know in the comment below as well if you get this camera and if you like it and uh, if you have any other suggestions. And if you're already using it and you want to share some of your tips and tricks for what you do when you're using it, leave a comment below, link to any videos that you have, and I'll be happy to go over there and comment and like it and uh, check it out. Yeah, so if you like this channel and you like this content, please subscribe. Um, and hit the bell so that you get notifications every time we upload a new video. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. All right guys, so I'm here at Road Run. Uh, I'm gonna play around with the Osmo Pocket. Now I suck at snowboarding. As you can see, I'm really terrible.